Yeah, non-competes. The guy who doesn't even understand what profit means. He's paying Kate half of the value of her labor. The rest of the money, the $25 that Bob pockets for himself, is called profit. Oh hi, I'm the heretic. And lately he's been making these, uh, puppet shows. Using straw men in skits to mislead his audience about capitalism and opinions of people he disagrees with. Anyone who's watched these videos, or even just my, postal cats, esoteric entities, sargons, and others' responses to non-competes videos and videos like them can see that they are meant to appeal to children. Non-competes, queer kid stuff, the BS and the BS. Look around and I'm sure you'll find a lot more. It's not a new phenomenon by any means, but it's not random either. Their propaganda is modeled after children's entertainment on purpose. Now why is this, you might ask? The simplest answer is that they want young children exposed to Marxist, or more specifically, neo-Marxist ideas. I say neo-Marxist because even Karl Marx believed the guns in the hands of the people. But this form of indoctrination becomes even more insidious when you realize they're pushing cultural Marxism on kids. Among its tenets, sexuality and intersectionality. They're trying to sexualize kids. Well, I mean, they don't all do that. In Noncompete's case, he's more focused on <laughs> economics, which actually leads into why I don't believe that this is targeted to kids. These ideas will just go over kids' heads. I know, I shouldn't patronize kids, but when I was 10 years old, I wasn't thinking about the labor theory of value. Actually, I was terrified out of my mind. If I did well enough on a test, that my mother wouldn't take away my video games. But when I look at a BS in the BS video, I can't imagine it being directed at anyone over the age of six. The only other people I'd expect to be watching this are either college feminists, gamma males, but I repeat myself, in their safe spaces, or government school teachers. And then it hit me. They're not meant for children. They're for government school teachers to show their classes. Now I don't have enough information about their viewership's demographics to prove anything, but it's the best theory I can come up with for this trend. By all means, I could be wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if I get a message on Discord saying their government teacher showed them a BS and the BS video in class. That said, let's check out a video, break it apart, and see if what I'm talking about holds any water. Hit it! Thanks for inviting me over to play video games with you, Nicky Beard. Uh, I wish we could have just played online. I can't believe the only system you have is a PlayStation. How many times do I have to explain PC Master Race to you? Oh lord, what have I done? So this video in particular is about how capitalism is killing gaming. This is gonna be fun. Well gee, Nicky Beard, I wish I could afford a gaming computer, but those graphics cards are really expensive because of all that Bitcoin mining and whatnot. You can play online through a PlayStation as well, and they're way cheaper than a gaming computer. Unless your naive horse puppet is talking about the original PlayStation, which raises more questions than answers. Now that reminds me, here, let me turn off my Ethereum farm before we start playing. Do you make a lot of money with that stuff? Well, technically I lose a ton of money on electricity, but my parents pay the power bill, so it's no skin off my fedora. Cringe. Alright, let me just log into Fortnite. Oh, man! What's wrong? Uh, the internet's not working. Now we can't play Fortnite! No explanation given. Hey. Well, how about we play an offline game like GTA 5? You can't play GTA 5 offline, Glue. Everybody knows that. Not even the story mode? It has always on DRM, so it won't even load up unless you're connected to the internet. Well, that doesn't seem fair. Well, who said life was fair? Even though there's a way to fix that issue with even the briefest of internet searches, this issue shouldn't exist to begin with. It's stupid. But how does Horse Puppet even know of GTA 5 if it still only owns a PlayStation 1? Damn it! What's wrong now? The ROMs never finished downloading. I, I guess Nintendo shut down all the ROM sites overnight, so I, I guess classic Nintendo games are off the table. Copyrights and intellectual property. I see where this is going. The actions of the state are going to be conflated with the actions of a free market. Now let's skip over another cringy skit. This one about the straw man puppet's lack of self-control. We can't play story mode games because of always on DRM. There are hundreds, literally hundreds, of games you can play offline right now. 
If your game library consists of only GTA 5, then you're beyond help. We can't even go to play Fortnite at your house because your PlayStation will permanently lock me out of my account. Will they? We can't even play 30-year-old Nintendo games because Nintendo sued all the ROM sites out of existence. Once something's on the internet, it's there forever. Do enough digging, and you can still find the CAD files for defense-distributed 3D-printed guns, uh, I mean ROMs for classic Nintendo games. Speaking of, the ROM sites are still up, so if you wanted to play retro non-Nintendo games, like for the Sega Genesis, you totally can. Golly, when did playing video games get so complicated? I don't know, Glue, but it's only getting worse. Pretty soon they're gonna make it so all games are streaming. Then we're really gonna be screwed. Gaming as a service? Nobody wants that. It's a way for people to play video games that would otherwise fry their crappy computers. You should want it more than anyone, Horse Puppet, since you told us that graphics cards are too expensive. Something terrible is happening to video games. I can't quite put my finger on what it is, but something or someone is ruining gaming. What can it possibly be? The government intervening in the market to prevent consumers from getting access to content they like, such as through copyright laws that allow Nintendo to take down classic game emulators, or like how Nintendo used copyright laws to shut down fan-made games like Pokemon Uranium and Metroid AM2R, or when Nintendo used copyright laws to demand a percentage of revenue Nintendo game streamers gain from their content. Wow, Nintendo's an asshole. Or how about the millions of dollars publishers like EA get from the government in government subsidies that protect them from market competition, or the fact that their predatory business model should have caused them to go out of business a decade ago. Anybody remember the SimCity always online fiasco? Companies are incentivized to take advantage of this because of the tragedy of the commons, wherein if one company doesn't use the public good called government force to monopolize people's access to their ideas, then their competition will, to the detriment of everyone involved. It's not Nintendo's fault, they're simply operating under the incentives of the current status regime. Though I'm not gonna lie, Nintendo has lost a lot of goodwill. Remember AM2R will be the rallying cry of the legions of former fans who cast Nintendo into the dustbin of history with EA. But if I know non-competes children's puppet show, we can expect the intervention of an obnoxious, sanctimonious puppet in 3, 2, 1... <laughs> Did somebody call for help? No. I don't think so. Oh, you, you didn't? Nuh-uh. Not that I know of. But... I detected distress. The distress it detected? Yeah, that's me. Please help. Someone's in trouble and needs my help. That's why I jumped here. How did you jump into my parents' basement? Oh, are you a real live superhero, miss? I am indeed. I am Super Jump Woman, and I'm here to save the day from, uh... Keep in mind, this is directed towards grade school kids. How do you think they feel? I'm gonna hazard a guess and say that nobody in these classrooms is gonna be under the age of 13. It's clear that all the problems you're having with gaming are the result of capitalism. We're actually four and a half minutes into the video and he only just says it. I already explained why the government enables and incentivizes predatory business models in gaming. Nope, this is meant to appeal to young, impressionable minds. Hey. Those puppets like playing Fortnite. I like Fortnite too, so everything they say must be great. What the heck does any of this have to do with gaming? Don't you see, Neckybeard? DRM, cracking down on ROMs, the move towards streaming video games, these are all moves by capitalists to extract more and more value out of gamers while offering less value in exchange. If that were true, then nobody would be buying these games, since value is determined entirely by what customers are willing to buy. The Marxist view of consumers is that they're like straw man puppets, mindlessly buying whatever is put in front of them with no agency, initiative, or preferences of their own, meaning businesses have no need to appeal to these audiences and can count on a static flow of cash limited exclusively by their industrial output. And this is what they want to teach to children, excuse me, teenagers. The truth is that value is subjective, and if people don't perceive they aren't getting value for buying it, they won't buy it. This isn't complicated. Go on, then. Don't you have some words to redefine? 
Why would a game studio intentionally screw over loyal customers? That doesn't make any sense at all. A business could never get away with that. They do every day, Nicky Beard. Now it's clear you have no idea what you're talking about. Game developers don't make these marketing decisions. They don't add always online DRM. Studios are employees of publishers who tell them what features need to be tacked on for no conceivable reason whatsoever. Well, no, not for no reason. It's because they're insulated from market competition by the state for the reasons I already mentioned. You see, capitalism is a system that requires infinite growth for capitalists. That means capitalists must constantly find new ways to extract value from customers while simultaneously attempting to reduce costs of production. And the infinite growth arguments. If this is true, then capitalism would have collapsed a long time ago after literally the first recession ever. And there are only two ways of increasing profits, by cutting costs of production or by getting customers to pay more, right? Nope! I'll give non-compete some credit though. He's finally learned what profit is, you guys. Now he just needs to learn what supply and demand is. Put simply, you can actually earn more money by lowering the price under certain circumstances. For example, you'll make more money selling candy bars at $1 as opposed to $1 billion. I know, weird, right? We already solved these problems though. There are lots of great indie games being released today. Yes, even at the date you are watching this video. By all means, support these developers instead of paying AAA publishers. I can't even remember the last time I gave EA money. So you agree, capitalism is making gaming worse for gamers and for game dev employees, right? Gee, I thought the game devs were predatory assholes who only exist to screw you. If it weren't for capitalism, we wouldn't have any video games. You can't blame these companies for wanting to make a profit for all of their hard work. But most of the profits don't even go to the people who are actually making the video games, Neckybeard. The profits go to the capitalists who own the corporations. When I said earlier, game dev studios are employees of the publishers, what that means is that the developers get their money from their publishers whether the game's a massive commercial success or a flop. Technically, that still means that they can earn a profit by producing a game less than the money budgeted to them. The revenue from the game goes to the publishers. Non-Compete could have made that point there, then made a point about how game devs are being exploited out of the success of their game. They aren't, by the way. But instead of informing his 8th grade audience, he needed to squeeze in those buzzwords, didn't he? Didn't he? Also, the fact that video games wouldn't exist at all but for capitalism is completely true. I mean, yes, things like Tetris would exist or that radar equipment missile defense game, but being prevented from playing GTA 5 online because the internet is down because reasons is a good problem to have as opposed to not having video games at all, isn't it? If you think I'm full of it, please, let me know where the Soviet Atari 2600 was or the North Korean Nintendo Entertainment Systems. You won't find it because collectivism has no mechanism for finding out what people want, as collective ownership makes determining prices all but impossible. Prices being a means for communicating wants, as price increases when demand for a certain commodity increases as well. And you can't have prices under collectivism. After all, you can't exchange with yourself. This is known as the economic calculation problem. Even if video games were produced because some bored programmer had a lot of free time in computers, they still wouldn't be able to gauge if people wanted them. Even if they tried something like opinion surveys, you're still only getting a limited sample from ignorant customers. Imagine living in 1969 and some guy comes up to you and says, Hey guy, do you want an Atari 2600? Uh, excuse me, what? So yes, under communism, there would be video games, but you wouldn't have them. We need capitalists to take risks and develop new ideas. Profits motivate innovation. Well, that's not true. Employee-owned companies have made some great games, like Dead Cells. That's just one game. Dead Cells? Never heard of it. Let's check it out. Huh. The aesthetic reminds me of Hyperlight Drifter. I mean, that's a good thing. Hyperlight Drifter is a gorgeous game. Okay, this game looks freaking awesome. I don't know what Motion Twin's business model is, but I don't care. 
That's the beauty of capitalism. To the consumer, it doesn't matter if the factory workers are white, black, brown, green, or anything in between. Whether the company is democratically arranged or a traditional firm, one thing I wish Marxists would understand is that people who support capitalism are not opposed to the workers' co-op model. If it is, as Marxists claim, a superior business model to traditional firms, then they would outcompete them in a free market. Fundamentally, I don't know what the best mode of production is, and if I did, this wouldn't be an argument for free market capitalism, but for making me a dictator. What I know is two things. First, I know that no one else knows how best to produce things either. They may think they know, but that speaks of arrogance. The second thing I know is that the best way to find out how best to produce video games is in a free market where customers decide what games they want to buy, which game development model produces the best games. Who knows? I think there's room for both traditional firms and workers' co-ops. So don't let Marxists trick you into thinking it's one or the other. Also, free advertising for dead cells! Yay! Capitalists will always seek new ways of increasing profits. Under capitalism, games only exist to profit capitalists. As capitalism progresses, things are just going to keep getting worse and worse for gamers because capitalists are constantly searching for new and better ways of screwing over gamers so they can build up their own profits. I don't think I need to say anything. I just figured you guys would enjoy that meaningless word salad. You know who won't enjoy it? The school-age kids forced to watch this drivel. Sony finally caved, and they're gonna give us crossplay. See, that's a victory for the free market. So one company made one minor concession to maintain their market share. That hardly balances the scales against all these other horrific trends towards capitalistic authoritarianism and gaming. Didn't Strawman Puppet make that same point about all video games capitalism and traditional firms do produce, but it got dismissed because Dead Cell exists? Sorry, you don't get to do that. There's really not much left regarding this video, so we can just end it here. Obviously, it's crap. Using meaningless language and horrible buzzwords to blame capitalism for things that aren't really capitalism's fault, like at all. Also, games are getting worse, really. There are certain features that you don't like, but there's also new things being added all the time. The explosion of indie games, the MOBA and battle arena genres, better graphics and better options in terms of gameplay. There's going to be some new, glorious things in the gaming industry, but there's also going to be a lot of crap too, and that's fine. We have to get through the crap to get to the gold. You're never going to be able to avoid this. But anyways, you can see the elements of children's programming in non-competes video: exaggerated, over-the-top characters, very simplified or non-existent plots, puppets. I mean, puppets. Come on, it's obvious. Maybe their ability to be shown in classrooms is limited. By their channel's relative lack of reach, the vast majority of people in the world, let alone America, have never heard of PewDiePie, let alone non-compete. So the odds that this will actually ever be seen in a classroom is thankfully quite low. It might just be that the Marxist worldview of simplifying infinitely complex interpersonal relationships around the world throughout all of human history as a struggle between hive mind A and hive mind B. Is such a childish idea that the only means to effectively communicate it is through childish mediums. However, when a Marxist government school teacher wants something to do when there's nothing left in the curriculum to teach, and they see this video pop up in their subscriptions, all I can say is, when that video is shown in the classroom, you heard it here first. Questions, comments, critique? How soon until you see stories of children being shown this in classrooms? Will any of my videos ever be shown in a government school? Oh God, I hope not. Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.